Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. I'm um, asking you all to bear with me on this one. I am using my newer computer uh, because I think I can get a better image quality on this computer and I'm able to do a bit more with the screen and cut stuff off and anyway, uh, let's hope it works out and hope that it looks better for you <laughs> and without further ado, let's jump right into it. It says Bitcoin is on a serious roll as of late. The world's number one cryptocurrency by market cap has been surging over the past few days and it looks like the assets price is getting bigger and bigger with each passing moment. Just yesterday, Bitcoin moved well past the $12,000 mark and was trading for around 12,700, marking the highest point it's reached in over a year. The last time Bitcoin hit 12K was in late August, only then. The asset struggled to maintain the momentum and needed to stay on a bullish path. This time, however, things are quite different. Bitcoin has spiked again and gone well beyond the $12,900 position, just a few dollars more. And Bitcoin will hit $13,000 and many analysts are confident that this will soon occur. In fact, several claim that investors should be looking forward to Bitcoin hitting $14,000 very soon. Of course, one of the main news stories that people believe has been the reason for this is the actual PayPal news. It is very rare, and I have not thus far seen any other website, any other place really talking about that it has been. Whether the futures, whether a company buying Bitcoin, it seems to be just off the back of the PayPal news. There are a large amount of articles floating around talking about that. We are going to see something Spectacular or insane very, very soon. This one says, bullish. Huge head and shoulders pattern developing in Bitcoin with $20,000 as the target. This one, of course, says uh, Bitcoin price rise to 500000 is inevitable. This was said by the Winklevise. Gemini crypto exchange founders Tyler and Cameron said that Bitcoin will eventually hit half a million dollars per coin during a recent interview with Peter McCormack. The question in our mind is not so much does it get to 500000 but how quickly, Tyler told McCormick during the podcast that happened yesterday. His thesis takes the market cap of gold and theoretical central bank allocation into consideration. He said, I will sort of contend that $500,000 Bitcoin is actually pretty conservative and the game hasn't even really started. I think he said something along the lines of like, we're, like we don't even know what's going to happen. Like we are... We, we can't fathom the exact extent of how high that Bitcoin is going to go in price as the world's economy continues to buckle under itself because it's not the prettiest thing at the moment. And this one says Ethereum could break dramatically higher once it holds 500 US dollars. A lot of people are assuming that we are going to see very soon some type of a continued surge from Ethereum as we get news of Ethereum 2.0 beginning to launch. Prices are relatively more or less where they were uh, yesterday. Uh, nothing too dramatic has happened. Some altcoins have fallen once again because they already had low trading volume. And I think a lot of the market was trying to keep up with Bitcoin, what have you, as we've previously seen before in the past, but all eyes right now are just on Bitcoin. Everybody wants to know where Bitcoin is going to go, how high it is going to move during the next leg. And once again, a lot of people are assuming or saying or thinking that uh, on November 5th, we should start seeing some major movements because at that point, uh, things will have been decided, if you will. And therefore, the market will kind of know where it's headed if you catch my drift. Anyway, that's all the price news. A lot of optimism. Tons and tons of optimism in the, in the news. There's not really... I haven't seen anything that said that Bitcoin was overbought, over this, was too high. Uh, it was. I, I think the only negative, air quote, thing that I saw was an article saying that Bitcoin was taking a breather. And the breather may last during the weekend and therefore... After that, we may start to see another movement pattern going up. Anyway, without further ado, let's move on. In another rich person just put tons of money into Bitcoin. It says Bitcoin has enjoyed a strong rally over the past few months as macro trends have favored its growth. The rally comes as an increasing number of investors, both within crypto and out of crypto, 
have realized there is a growing fundamental value in owning Bitcoin. Bill Barheit, CEO of Abra, made this much clear when he recently announced he has bumped up his Bitcoin exposure. Abra is a leading crypto asset exchange, yada, yada, yada. Commenting on Twitter, Barheit, who used to work at the CIA and NASA, wow, wonderful for him, said that 50% of his investment portfolio is now in Bitcoin. He said a few weeks ago, I increased my ownership of Bitcoin significantly, and it's now 50%. That's insane. 50% of my investment portfolio. Why? I believe Bitcoin is the best investment opportunity in the world right now. There are three reasons I believe this to be true today. Fundamentals, technicals, and sentiment. And I guess these are his tweets where he was actually saying all of these things. Speaking on fundamentals, he noted that Bitcoin's decentralization and fixed supply is becoming more apparent than ever. He... <laughs> And so many people don't get it. And that's the part that really grinds my gears is that people don't understand the scarcity of Bitcoin. Nonetheless, millionaires, when, you, when, you're, when you're worth about 10, 15, 20 million dollars and you have put 50% of your wealth, your whatever, your richness into a digital asset, it's my... Anyway, he also mentioned how the cryptocurrency is seeing increasing development in the privacy field, which will be important in an increasingly digital world. That also goes to the news that we had a couple of days ago where we heard that I think it was Taproot and Schnorr uh, were finally... I think they were implemented on the Bitcoin network, but now it's up to the... I think I believe the miners on the network to kind of give the con thumbs up consensus and say, yes, this is absolutely wonderful. My friend sent me this last night and I looked at it and I... And, and, and it, it's not that I rolled my eyes, but it was more of a, of course, this was going to happen. If, if anyone thought that they were, I, and I told you this before, of course, we're going to start seeing on a daily basis, all these rich people starting, oh, wait, me, me too. Yeah, I also, me, yeah, I'm also rich. I also have a whole bunch of money in the Bitcoin because I like the money. So we're, we're, we're going to see, there, there, are, there are probably tons of CEOs, tons, and I, and, I, and I say tons as more than 50 on the planet who have a, a huge allocation of more than 10 to 15% of their net worth inside of Bitcoin right now. It's just that we only get the news from the people who want to be known that they own this much Bitcoin. And also, I mean, just imagine all the other ones who are relatively silent or accumulating behind the scenes who don't want you to know how much money they actually have in cryptocurrencies. Anyway... This was also quite popular news, as one might have imagined. I assume next week we will probably, I'm going to say two. We're going to get at least two other rich people who are going to be announcing, hey, we're also rich and we also have tons of money in Bitcoin. It'll do nothing to the price for now. Uh, but once the price gets a roaring and people realize, oh, Bitcoin. Okay, I got it. And they realize how rich these people are. That's going to be a whole nother news story in and of itself. Because remember, we had, but whatever, anyway, blah, 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 blah. we had the news story before years ago that the Winklevoss twins, I think, became billionaires from their Bitcoin investment. So imagine 100 billionaires from Bitcoin. Anyway, let's move on. In really popular news that I know that no one's going to really like, the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, or FinCEN, and the Federal Reserve are looking to get more information on smaller crypto transactions than ever before. According to a notice of proposed rulemaking published on Friday, the U.S. agencies want to lower the $3,000 threshold established in 1995 to just $250 for international transactions meaning that financial institutions would need to exchange client information alongside all crypto transactions greater than $250 that begin or end outside of the United States. Which is to say, the FATF proposed travel rule, as it is known, would apply to relatively small amounts of money changing hands. The information that financial institutions need to exchange under the travel rule would be the name and address of the originator of or transmitter, the amount of the payment or transmittal order, and the payment or transmittal order's execution date. The other information that crypto exchanges would need to reveal would be any payment instructions received from the original or transmitter with the payment or transmittal order and the beneficiary's bank or recipient's financial institution's identity. So basically, I mean, that's a kind of nice way of saying it. They want to know exactly who you are, where you're sending it to, how much you sent to that person, when you sent it, and probably even 
uh, they may ask for a why. I'm not sure if this happens with many different uh, transfers, but sometimes when you do larger transfers, if you've ever done a larger transfer, they'll ask you why you're sending this money. Who is this money going to? Why are you paying them for this? Lowering from $3,000 to $250 is, is a little telltale, if I can say that. They are trying desperately to figure out how to maintain control of all of these things. Um, and I think this is one of their ways of trying to do so. Part of the issue is, and I will say this because it is looking increasingly true, the U.S. is pushing themselves into a corner that they will not be able to get out of financially. Not only the printing trillions of dollars, not only the debt crisis, not only the, the unemployment crisis, which is also a very big thing right now, um, but also just deliberately making sure that cryptocurrency companies just don't do business within their borders. I'm not sure what the goal is. I assume it has to do with them trying to figure out a way to make way for their companies that they are trying to create or that they are partnered up with uh, to be able to have all the movement that they want within the cryptocurrency space with no other real objections or other companies trying to take their money. 3000 to 250 all that does is, is, is people make sure that they simply don't use your exchanges. Or even more so, if you want to be completely realistic with it, uh, this only goes through cryptocurrency exchanges. Remember we were talking about before the amount of people who've been taking their money off of cryptocurrency exchanges? What do you, do you, do you think more people are going to be like, well, I'm, I'm okay with this. I don't mind being tracked. That's, it's, it's absolutely insane. This is, like I said, it's not the most popular news, if you get my drift, uh, but it is, it's all over the place. This is very big. Is, is this also it? Yeah. U.S. moves to cast a wider net for catching money launderers, crypto or otherwise. This is not the way you bring money into your borders. It's just not. And even more so, if you want to really talk about this, I was discussing uh, with a very close friend of mine the, 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 the prospect of moving to Portugal because of crypto. For those of you who don't know, they have a 0% tax rate when it comes to crypto. And we're trying to figure out if they have a 0% tax rate when you cash out of crypto, which I think is what it is. We're also trying to see if it also goes from crypto to crypto transfers. If you're transferring from one crypto into another, is there any taxes that are incurred? Because if it's not, that means you could day trade all you want and there's no crypto taxes on it. But what's really crazy is we were talking about it and I was like, imagine if you cashed out of crypto and you made $2.5 million and then paid no taxes on it, you would still in some way be incentivized to be like, I'm going to buy property here just to make sure that I have a place to live and a place to stay. Like the country still benefits in that way. But this is, if you could see me like pointing at my screen, it, it's, it's a lot. Anyway, yeah, this is happening. Um, I assume it, it is a proposal, but this is definitely probably going to go through. And as more companies continue to, to flee the nest, where does that leave them? Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to look into that Portugal thing and you will all be uh, recipients of the answer because 0% uh, on taxes sounds absolutely wonderful. And then if you can trade crypto at 0%, I mean, come on. Like, why would you not do that? Anyway, let's move on. Um, in its news... I, I didn't understand exactly why it was so popular, but it was definitely very popular. Crypto asset broker Voyager Digital Limited is buying LGO Markets, a French cryptocurrency exchange focused on corporate investors. The two firms will merge under one brand known as Voyager, and their two separate native tokens, VGX and LGO, will also merge. How wonderful that they also had their own crappy tokens. The deal grants Voyager, a Canadian securities exchange listed firm, access to the European retail market through LGO's virtual asset service provider, license held with the French financial regulator Industry Media has reported. LGO will cease to concentrate on institutional investors on Halloween, as it simultaneously assumes the Voyager brand, the, com to complete the acquisition, Voyager will issue 1 million shares, whose value will, in part, determine the ultimate deal price. The other part of, uh, will depend on the value of the merged in-house crypto token, which, according to reports, will feature decentralized finance functions such as governance, as community governance, excuse me, and staking at an initial rate of 7%. 
Right. Uh, I know a lot of you are scratching your heads right now. This was all over the place. And I don't, maybe because I am not in France, maybe I don't understand the significance of the cryptocurrency exchange that they acquired. Uh, I don't know, but it was all over the place. Um, like, really, constantly. I, I, maybe the news is that because there was a new acquisition, that's what was popular. But sure, I've never heard of Voyager. I'm sure you've never heard of Voyager. What was the other one? Um, LGO. And we definitely have never heard of, uh, wh wh where are the letters? VGX and LGO tokens before. Never heard of them. But um, good for them. I'm glad they partnered up and or were acquired acquisitionally. It blew my mind how popular this thing actually was because, you know life anyway um yeah that's that news i'm not sure why exactly it was so popular but without further ado we're just going to move on so i thought this was a mimic of before lo and behold it was not in an interview with cnbc today brad garlinghouse said that the uk regulator the financial conduct authority has provided ripple with the assurances that it doesn't consider XRP to be a security, a key source of contention in its home market. Instead, the FCA deems XRP to be a... Wow, okay. The, the, the Financial Conduct of Authority of the, in the United Kingdom has deemed XRP to be a currency, he said. And with that clarity, it would be advantageous for Ripple to operate in the United Kingdom. The $10 billion fintech company has been considered has been considering several potential new jurisdictions and Garlinghouse revealed that the legal status of XRP is key to any decision. Japan, Singapore, and Switzerland are also under consideration. Ripple has long chafed, chaffed at the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission stances on cryptocurrencies. The SEC has indicated that Bitcoin and Ethereum are commodities and therefore are not securities and do not fall under their jurisdiction their arm of the law while the status of xrp remains less clear and i said i thought this was a mimic of something that we had before because we heard about a week ago week and a half ago uh that brad garlinghouse mentioned that he was a little peeved uh that he had still not heard from the sec as to whether if xrp was a security or a commodity you know reading between the lines he didn't say those exact things but he said uh, we need more regulatory clarity within the cryptocurrency space, and I assumed, correctly, uh, that it had to do with the SEC still not coming forward after four years to declare whether XRP was a security or a commodity. So to get uh, the United Kingdom to pretty much say, nope, it's a currency, is kind of huge. I still is also right here as well. It says, is Brad Garlinghouse planning to move Ripple to London? I think, it, listen... I think that he's not going to because he probably feels that he can make the most money within the United States. This is false. This is not going to happen. I assume it is going to take a number of years. If I'm mistaken, it's because I'm, I'm human and I'm fallible. I assume that he is not going to receive any answer for a while as to if XRP is a security within the United States. I think it makes so much more sense if you have the opportunity to move into the United Kingdom and therefore slightly, as you are in Europe, have access to the European markets and also move into Switzerland and into Japan, why would you not do this? But I feel like he won't. It's not that I think he's a, a coward or something like that, but it's something along the lines of I think he's holding out hopes for something that just isn't going to happen. When you go onto TV, when you go onto CNBC, you do it to declare... I have money, I have power, I have influence. Listen to what I'm saying. We are going to move. This is a this is a a a, a lighthearted threat, if you will, in your direction. You have to understand that we are going to move our money if you do nothing. But they've been making these claims for the last couple of years. It would make a lot more sense if you have been deemed <clears throat> a Imagine what that would do for XRP if Ripple just moved this month, next month, by the end of this year, and said, by US, we no longer have to worry what we are because we are deemed to be deemed a currency, not even a, a, a commodity, 
is insane. Anyway, um, I don't think they're going to move just based off of pure logic. I, I, I can feel in the air that they're not going to. If they do, I think the price of XRP would greatly benefit. And we'd get away from this entire thing. The, the, the entire idea of any cryptocurrency or anything being a security or a commodity is also just pure. It's, it's based off of relic age regulatory practices. Like the US SEC deems things a security based off of a law that was created, what was it, 1927? That's almost 100 years ago and the law has remained exactly the same. Imagine the creation of the computers in the 1960s and then Windows in the 90s. And then as far as we've come technology-wise to still think, well, th that thing from 100 years ago still looks exactly correct. I think, the, I think the first thing that the SEC deemed a security was like pe people fighting over land and it had to do with like apples and oranges or something. It's, it's, it's nonsense. Anyway, um, that's the Ripple news for today. I thought it was uh, just a continuation of the other day's news, but apparently... Now they're talking about moving to London. It's not going to happen. But if they did it, it would work out for them financially. But it's still not going to happen because I can just feel it in my bones. And to finish things off, um, the highly regulated Chicago Mercantile Exchange, or the CME, has overtaken BitMEX as the derivatives exchange with the second largest amount of open interest for Bitcoin futures contracts. This comes from data from SKU Analytics. This after U.S. law enforcement's pressed charges against BitMEX's owners for complacency over money laundering at the beginning of the month. OKEX is still the leader in terms of open interest, even though its founder was also taken in by... Oh, gosh, I forgot about that. Yeah, okay, well, then it's, 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 it's clearly some type of a, of, of a witch hunt at that point, if you kind of line them up together. Bitcoin futures contracts are, essentially, which is, yeah, th think about that. Uh, this one was 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 taken in because they said you're not regulatorily compliant enough. BitMEX was also had paper thrown at them saying for you're you're not uh, money laundering compliant enough. And the the CME, which is another stock exchange, pretty much got the go ahead. And I'm as assuming that they're not going to be raided anytime soon. <sighs> Bitcoin futures contracts are essentially bets on bitch. Wow, on sorry, Bitcoin's future price. If through some lapse in our judgment, you manage to negotiate a futures contract with Decrypt to buy Bitcoin at $5,000 next month, we would have to give you that Bitcoin for $5,000 upon the expiry of that contract. The news basically is um, a lot of people are figuring out, I don't know why it took them so long, that a lot of this is coordinated. Uh, we mentioned years ago together collectively that it's fairly obvious that they're going to try and make sure that things that are regulated to them, that work out for them, that benefit them, you know who them or they are, and everything else within the cryptocurrency space would kind of be purged. We've seen through the years a lot of cryptocurrency exchanges have been shut down, have gone away, have lost funding, have been accused of X, Y, and Z, and now they're simply no longer around. It's been about seven Five to seven different cryptocurrency exchanges per year, cryptocurrency projects per year who kind of get this uh, hammer, if you will. And then at some point, they just kind of really don't make it anymore. So anyway, um, yeah, I mean, not really much more I can say on this. It, it, it just basically has to do with exactly what we were talking about. Um, if someone created it on their own free will and uh, it was not given over to regulators or there wasn't a direct line to them. Uh, Binance is also up there as well. This is why Binance left the United States and has been moving to different countries because I'm pretty sure their regulators in other countries are probably like, it's fine. Uh, but the, the, the U.S. for some reason is is really good at, at throwing money into the ocean and saying, go away, we don't, we don't want you because this is the common theme that's been taking place. Anyway. Um... I'm going to tell you something. I don't have my phone next to me, and I don't want to run into the other uh, room to go and get it. So I do not have the Patreon names for today. I do apologize. Um, I, and I, and I thought about it like two tabs ago. I was like, oh, boy, I definitely don't have the names. Um, at the moment, the market's basically like I said before. We are sideways down or sideways up, if that makes any sense. Bitcoin is currently up by 0.33%. It is at 12,938 US dollars. I assume we're just waiting for something to materialize, something 
crazy to happen in the market to see exactly where everything goes. Nothing going up too crazy. Everyone's roughly within the exact same range. Nothing up by like 38%. Uh, okay, ABBC coin is up by 22% uh, because, yeah, nothing too crazy or dramatic. Um, I hope this, I really hope this worked out. Um, I was fiddling around with it for a bit, trying to figure out um, how to get the image quality right, how to zoom in correctly and do all these other things. I hope the image quality is a lot higher. We'll see. I'm going to stop the video in a couple seconds and I'll be able to see if everything really worked out. I do hope you all enjoyed. I hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.